Hello, welcome to a podcast. With us today we have Ann Bagby. She's going to be exhibiting at the Query Art Gallery from November 6th through December 3rd. Welcome to the gallery. Thank you. And um, I'm looking at your work and it seems that you've certainly found a unique niche. How do you come about to have this style and, and what you do? Well, I I really like experimental work. I like trying dif- different things, new me- you know, new um, surfaces and uh, new paints. But my I think a core interest I have is in pattern and surface, and uh, I think that sort of connects all the, the pieces. And the fact that they're all twelve by twelve, it, it's a nice size for uh, getting an overview for seeing a lot of pictures at once, mm-hmm. and they all kind of relate together. It's seems strange when I just take one out, you know, because they, they all have kind of a life with with their partners, with the other paintings. Uh-huh. So it's a progression with your work? They, they're all related? Um, yes. One it's, another. it's something like a, a journal in that whatever you're doing at the time will show up in the work. And whatever you're thinking about, what someone says to you or, or what you see, it all kind of filters into the work in, in small ways so that, uh, and you progress that way. You know, you do one painting and say, oh, would it be good if I had done something else? And so then you move on to another painting and, and so that um, they'll be related. Can and you that's describe? What I hope, oh, hope to show in, in the paintings that mm-hmm. I picked to talk about today were ones that uh, kind of related in, in one painting led to another. Oh, okay. So we'll get into that when we actually go through the individual yeah, uh-huh. painting reviews. That's cool. Can you actually describe your work to me? I haven't seen it live yet. I'm just seeing the images. I mean, what exactly is it? I mean, you have a lot of tight um, patterns there. Uh-huh. They're uh, 12 by 12, and they're on panels um, mm-hmm. so that there, there's no glass or, or frame to interfere uh, with the paintings. And um, they're all fairly small in, uh, in that sense. Mm-hmm. And in all exactly the same size. So you're working with oil-based paints, and no, no, they're acrylic, uh-huh. and acrylic, and um, all the patterns are done either by hand or uh, stamps or stencils that I've cut. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, is, what do you do? You start with a pattern first, and you work in the the painting, or how? I usually start with the image first, but um, I, I can go both ways. And um, sometimes I'll have a whole panel just covered with pattern and uh, find the image in it. And sometimes I do the image and add the pattern. Oh, that's a unique. It's, there's no set way of doing You know, if you did it the same way all the time, it would get really boring. So it's fun to try different things. And, right. And do you have the color picked out as well in terms of how you want to work the image? Yes, they're all orange and green. I mean, they, some of them aren't orange and green, but that, those are connecting colors. There's a lot of orange and green in this show. Mm-hmm. I I just started out doing those colors, and, and I thought, well, when I get tired of them, I'll switch. And I, it's still a lot to to work with in that, so I, they're still stuck in that color field. Uh huh. How long have you been an artist? Well, that's a long time, a long uh-huh. time. <laughs> uh, for the, uh, the last 20 years, 25 years, I've had a studio outside the home, uh-huh. you know, I go to every day. Oh, and, okay. But I painted before that, in, you know, in the back bedroom sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, were you inspired by a particular artist or were you trained or is this something you just sort of learned on your own? Well, as a young person, I was inspired by Van Gogh, and I think a lot of people, especially in my generation, have been inspired by him. It seemed like someone who really expressed emotions that we all had, and it took me a long time to kind of tone down my colors because his goals and greens and all influenced me. So it's kind of you fight that kind of influence, but he got me started. Uh, so your earlier work is uh, much uh, brighter, is what you're saying, more bold? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're really bright and you also have uh, all that pattern and you have a subject matter, that's an awful lot to put on a 12 by 12 inch piece. And so I found that my paintings worked better if I got the colors just a little bit um, toned down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, so. now, do you typically arrange your work in collections? Is- yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a... Um, homosote on my walls in my studio and so they're hung as I work on them in uh, a group of 20. They, they have to look good by themselves but they also have to fit into the group. And I see that a lot of the images have uh, obviously uh, figures and faces. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and so, so what inspires those individual figures? Um, this particular group, or most of the ones I'm sh- they have 
shown you, uh, were inspired by um, a still life with the um, mannequin. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like the, the mannequin was the figure, but the still life was kind of my past. That's how I started. And, and combining the two seemed like an interesting idea. And I started out with, um, you know, having the whole, like a landscape with all the figures. And then as I um, progressed, the mannequin became more and more important mm -hmm. until he was, that's all it was on the page or on the panel. And, uh, the, um, I have three, four faces there that, uh, you know, just add more and more um, things to them. You know, you just have them up on the wall and, and kind of layer and layer glazes and paint out and paint in and you put something on and I heard this is a word I learned yesterday you decollage where you take things off your collage oh know. there we go That's yeah. what I was going to ask you at what point do you know when your work is complete I don't always know but I, and, and you know when it comes back from a show a lot of times I say oh you know I wish that were green and off you go again and what any ones I don't choose for a particular show are left behind and those always get worked on some more uh -huh. So once you take a show, do you ever go back and retouch it, or you just start a new no. work as part of or your... You, no, I paint and paint until they're sold. <laughs> <laughs> Can't seem to stop myself. Uh, how does it take you to... Something's really done, you know, I think, oh, that one's really done, and, and I, I won't do anything more to it. Mm -hmm. and, and when I move on very far away from that picture, I won't go back. But as long as I'm still thinking of those ideas and those images, then I keep on layering I'm curious. I mean, if you have an element from a painting, how long does that? How long does those elements carry over to the future paintings? Is it just a matter of two or three, or does it keep going? Oh, sometimes a year later, a year and a half later. You, I just you can't predict. And sometimes you you go, it's a false start. You know, you'll maybe do two pictures like that and say no, and uh -huh. you pull back, and you still keep those two pictures in the collection, but you don't. They don't progress to anything else. How would you like the your, the viewers of your work to? Um, would you like to, for them to take away from viewing your work, I guess, is the best question I can ask. Well, I, I like it when people think they look like they're fun, that they would like to do it. You know, I, I don't, maybe that's not the effect you want, to have, but that's what I, I like that when people say, uh -huh. oh, when I saw your work, I, I thought, well, I could do that. And, and I kind of like that. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, th I like that people see it from a distance, they see the whole group, and then they come in really close. I uh -huh. like that too, you know, and and uh, and then maybe when they go, I say, oh well, you know, I really like the dog, or I really like the teapot, or whatever one they like, and and, and respond that way to me. I, I really enjoy hearing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm always surprised which ones people like. You know, the ones, my babies, the ones that I really like, are generally not the ones that uh, the other people like as much. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so for future artists looking at your work, what, what words of wisdom would you provide to them? Well, I think that you keep going till it looks good. And if you keep on going, eventually it'll look good. Mm -hmm. You know, if you quit because you're afraid you're going to ruin it, that's not good. And I do ruin a lot of my pictures. You know, every <laughs> once in a while I'll have one that looked pretty good and I mess with it and it doesn't. But if you keep on going, you know, you can generally pull something out. You know, I think a lot of artists, uh, young artists especially, quit too soon. You know, they get some little something in the picture they like and quit. And uh, I think, you know, you need more layers. You need to push it on until it's unique. Mm -hmm. and my, my favorite of my pictures are always ones that I've worked on a long time. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And we have some of those at the, at yeah. the gallery, I'm certain. Yes, yeah, we have a bunch that you'll recognize it. <laughs> well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing the work, and uh, um, certainly the people that come to see your exhibit are going to be uh, seeing something special, and we look forward to so, opening. So I'm real pleased to be um, be showing in, in, the, in the gallery. All right. Well, thanks for, uh, for our chat, and, uh, and, um, and we'll look forward to your exhibit. Thank you. I started out with a panel that was covered with uh, all types of printed paper that I had printed myself with acrylic on tissue paper, on archival tissue paper. And then I drew with a Prismacolor pen 
the still life with uh, the mannequin and, um, and then began to paint out uh, the different patterns. And, and so most of, the, most of the top layer is painting and the collage is on the bottom of the, of the work. Mm-hmm. You can tell that there, it's also a still life with a mannequin, but the mannequin's getting more important and uh, it looks less like a real wooden mannequin and more like a figure. And this one was one of the few in the show that's completely painted. There's, uh, except for my uh, signature on the right-hand corner, there's no collage. And I use masks to do the um, the printing, the pattern on it. Uh-huh. The um, pattern on the mannequin is done with a ruling pin and with acrylic. Everything in here is acrylic. Third one is part of the same series, but the um, the figure has left the still life and has uh, become the whole picture. Mm-hmm. And um, this picture, the background is the panel once again was collaged uh, completely um, with with print and paper if you've uh, seen the, my video uh, I did this background paper on the video and added uh, the figure using a stencil and paint out I painted out around the figure uh, once again we're, in, we're working with the mannequin as a figure number four is uh, the last painting from this series of the mannequin uh, in, as a still life. And in, in this one, the still life has completely disappeared, and the mannequin stands alone. And it's still a still life because a mannequin is an object rather than a figure. But it's the kind of not cross the line on here. Um, it, it, he's doing things that a mannequin couldn't really do. He's got is a lot more uh, articulated than a mannequin would be, and yet he's painted like a mannequin. And uh, this was um, a progression from the first still life with a mannequin in it to the picture of just the mannequin by itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, a series of paintings that I did uh, from drawings and uh, using a transfer method. Uh, I started out um, transferring this drawing, and I did it twice, uh, no, this drawing and another uh, number f- uh, six, or the orange figure, um, are both done from the same drawing, and I took it in different directions. I um, glazed the whole thing with color and then painted out with uh, pastel colors and stamped and collaged and had fun with both of them. This uh, this painting is done uh, from a transfer, from a drawing that I had done, and I have two pictures in this show done from this same drawing. I was just testing out this technique, and I um, did the, the put the drawing down and then tried different ways of painting it. And the other painting is also in this show. It is the uh, head with uh, the orange and the buttons and the purple. I um, I glazed the drawing uh, with bright colors and then painted out areas uh, with more pastel opaque paint and then um, stamped around the, the edges and, um, and just played with it a while. The orange picture, if we go look for that one, um, I took it a little further as far as adding uh, objects and, and um, kept on uh, layering buttons and things like that. But you can see they're both from the same drawing. Sure. Number six uh, is uh, one of the the paintings that uh, started out from the very beginning of this series of 12 by 12. It was one of the very first uh, panels I did, and it started out with just a drawing of a head. And I have worked on it every time uh, I've shown it. I've put on another layer and and glazed it and uh, added a few more things to it. And so it is now quite thoroughly covered uh, with um, collage and assemblage and uh, things that uh, I've put on it. And I kept it in the show uh, because way back when it first started, I showed it to one of my workshops and they, they really liked it. So I kept thinking, well, there must be something in this one. And I kept working on it. And, and uh, I've gotten now to the point where I think it's finished and I really kind of... Um, like it since I've lived with it a long time. <laughs> mm-hmm. The white um, collage um, with the frame around it, uh, it started sort of the same way. I was asked by a magazine if I would do uh, 
with an, a group of artists, we all would do one of the queens. And so I didn't know quite what I wanted to do, so I did several starts, and this was one of them. And it started out with just the panel, and then I started adding more things, and then I started taking the stuff off, and then I painted over all of it, and then I covered it all with collage, and then I put some of it off. Anyway, I kept on working on it for a very long time, and, uh, and then I read somewhere that you could cut a hole in the panels and make a frame, and so I did that. So it's just really evolved over a, a long period of time until all of a sudden I thought, well, this has just got about as much on it as 12 by 12 inch picture can take, uh -huh. and I quit. Mm -hmm. I wanted to end with uh, this picture that's um, got the face cut in half, yep. number eight. Uh, this painting I, I thought might be a good one to show how some of the paintings have evolved. There's very little collage in this, um, as much or as less, less collage than uh, just straight painting. I started out with a painting of a head of a man, realistic. And then I painted over that and added the mask. And you can see that it's... Um, it was started out as a black man and then it ended up into sort of a white uh, clown. And then I cut the whole thing in pieces and uh, collaged it onto uh, the panel mm -hmm. so that it's uh, come a long way from what it started out as. Uh -huh. And uh, I, it seemed to work when it was finished. I, I kind of liked it. Yeah, I like that piece as well. It's nice. Mm -hmm.